So today we are reading from Sri Sri Prema Bhakti Chandrika by Narottam Shla Narottam Dastaku Mahashai. Welcome everyone. And uh, Jainanda Mara just told me it's a very nice verse. He knows also very well this Prema Bhakti Chandrika. And this verse is about the meditation on Radha Krishna and how to do dhyan. How to do deep meditation. Radha Krishna Korodya Svafne O Nabalo An Prema Vina Anana Hicha Yoga Lakishora Prema Yena Lakshabana Hema Arati Piriti Prasidya. Meditate on Radha Krishna and don't speak of anything else but them, even in your dreams. Don't desire anything else but Prema. The Prema of the Yuga Lakishura is like gold, molten a hundred thousand times. Meditate on the rasa of their deep attachment and love. So subject is anxious meditation. Means so anxious that they come in the dreams. Good if you also speak about this, that this is possible. Yeah. And this is actually that something we would like to uh, aspire for in this lifetime also that we can dream because we are anxiously calling out with feelings in our meditation. So in this one, uh, uh, in the purport of uh, Srila Nanta Das Babaji Maharaj, he is explaining that in this three party, I wanted to ask you, three party means three verses or three party means the verse? Because I always think, what is the meaning of three party? I don't know, but usually three means uh, maybe three, like kind of lying, but uh, this not the uh, three, yeah. you know, three. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Srila Thakur Mahashai mentions the internal practice of the Raga Nugia Manjari Bhav practitioner. So this internal practice, it's not outside, it's not visible. It is something like we know it is done with the mind and the heart, the chitta vritti best. And it's not something that anybody can see outside. It is only between us and our Ishtadev. And he says, Thako Mahashaya says, Radha Krishna Koro Dhyan Svapne O Na Bolo On. Meditate on Radha and Krishna and don't speak of anything else but them. That means we are fixed in this, in their lives, in their lila, in their contact. And don't speak of anything else but them. Of course, this is very easy in Vrindavan because here everyone speaks about them. <laughs> and when I was walking down my room, then there were some nice Prajabasis who were renovating the walls of the Mongemande rooms and they were just chanting 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And they did this in such a lovely and light mood. So which verse are we reading? From uh, 79 of Prima Bhakti So here we, we see that this is possible that we always remember them and we don't speak of anything else. And even if we have to speak something else, internally we can think about them. That is the art and that is something also we need mercy for this, but also desire. It's like a determination. Wow. She has nice wow. look. Also, this, this little girl, she has good determination. She has Radha and Krishna, wow. and she loves them so much. Wow. And she always plays with them, and she shows us wow. her determination. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and this also we have to become like little girls who want to serve Radha Mohan, especially our Swamini, and always be determined during the day, everything that happens must be her mercy. How can I learn today what she wants to tell me? What kind of messages are these days giving me when I try to really always be in her service and remember her? Do you have an advice on this, Chananda Maharaj? So this is a good day to fix our Swarupa and uh, Ishtateva. And then, whatever we have to say, is something related with uh, Radha Moha. Or even though we may not relate it, but uh, consciously we don't forget them. Meditate on Radha, Krishna, and don't speak of anything else but them. Now there is one paragraph where it is about the general remembrance and how to do smaran. And it's quoted from Padma Purana. It has been heard in the old days that anyone who meditates on the divine person, Achutya, or remember him, will attain his abode. This verse is quoted in the third vilas of Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas in the glorification of meditation. And Srimad Sanatana Goswami writes in his commentary on this world verse. And he is Acharya for Sambanda, as you know. Meditation means to deeply contemplate the Lord's beauty from the sole of his lotus feet up to the crown of his hair, from the bottom to the top. Deeply contemplate on the form. So we are deeply contemplating on Shimati Radhika. On her nails, in the last days, we have heard about her beautiful lotus nails and how they are like mirrors and how they are shining and they are reflecting her love and her service to Moha. And I remember once, Gopinath, one very nice sharing of yours. I can still remember because it was so touching. When they are meeting, and she shyly looks down to her nails, mm -hmm. but she has in her nails the reflection of him. What? Ten times. Yeah, then she sees Mohan ten, ten times. times. Because on oh, every toenail, which is so shiny and so much like a mirror, she has him and 
it's very uh, amazing that everything she does, every look she takes is always, wow. she has him. And that we can learn for our Swamini, we also be the same. Because we love Shimati Radhika more than Mohan. Wow. So when we have these memories, we are thinking of our Swamini. How can I always think of your service? Always be connected to you and all my thinking, wanting and dreaming. And then we can uh, attain her. Here he is quoting uh, from Padma Purana and different, different uh, scriptures. How the activity of the mind and of the heart is very powerful. And there is no particular difference between meditation and smaran here. When smaran becomes deep, meditation comes to be. When the memory comes deep, like any mother knows, when they are separated from their child, they always remember their baby, their little daughter, their little boy. And this remembrance becomes so deep that sometimes during the day when they are in the office, they start daydreaming. Mm. You know that? Mm. No, when we mm. are daydreaming, we are doing some service, we are doing some office work or some household mm. work. But because we are always in remembrance, it becomes so natural that we are daydreaming about our swami. <laughs> that is uh, what uh, Thakur Mahashai Shila Naratam Thakur is, is inspiring us to do. And when we, we train our mind and our determination to really connect to Swamini, then it becomes natural and meditation happens naturally. <laughs> Deep and specific concentration of the mind is called meditation or dhyan. And this meditation is the very life of spiritual practice. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> not chanting, not reading, not studying, but remembering that during the day. Connecting, yes. That is, uh, if you remember Srimati Radhika, that is like chanting Mahamantra also. There's no you difference. You will be quiet. There is no difference between the Nama and the Guna and the Rupa, between the name, the form and the qualities. So when you remember Shimati Radhika, like for example, her beautiful toenails, that is uh, perfect. And then you hear like when we remind each other, we hear uh, how she is so beautiful that in her toenails, when she's standing in front of Mohan, she can see him in her toenails like a mirror. That remembrance is not different from chanting Mahamantra or reading. It is, it is the result, actually. Because sometimes we have the tendency, I know this also for myself, that I chant like a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I mean, like during the day, because I want to engage my mind and my tongue in a positive way. But then actually, I think, what am I doing here? Well, this is not some impersonal words. This is my Swamini. And this is the service to her. And then I. And now I practice in a different way. I have changed. I try to change. I am in the process because I try to become more personal. And in my Swarup, in my feelings of a Darcy, which 
by the mercy of Gurudev, he has installed in my heart. I try to remember Swamini as a person, not as a mantra. That is uh, what I try to practice during the day and to, to remember the where is she now, what she would do now, like, you know, often more. I don't say I'm perfect, I'm just a complete beginner and a foolish person. But uh, by Gurudev's mercy, I have heard that this is the process. And we hear here the words of Srila Narottam Nastaku. And he is stressing this again and again. Deep and specific concentration of the mind. It's not something only like to be repeated like a... Yeah, like a, like a must. But something lovingly, like I say, when the bridge passes, when they, they are lovingly chanting and they are in happiness and they are connected to Swamini because they feel they are theirs, they are, she is mine. And this remembrance is the very life of spiritual practice. But Gurudev is never judging. I mean, we should also not judge that this is good, this is bad. We are all on our different levels, right, Gurudev? Every effort is perfect. Every yeah. endeavor is good. Yeah, asta, asta. It, uh, according to our levels, asta, asta. Also, our stage. our stage. No? We are having capacity to do some... No. To do some meditation, and uh, we also at the same time have to be um, patient with ourselves and endeavor for the highest, but also accept the level where we are and try to improve. Right. No? Because often I think for myself, good if. Yes, if I cannot remember the Leela or if I too much in external activities, then there is mantra, there's my mantra. But of course, I aspire that something more personal of the understanding and the meditation will happen in my mind. <coughs> and in one of the Pikas, one of the commentaries I read, when our mind and our consciousness becomes more and more purified, wow then there will be a, a point in time and it's sure to happen that she will come to us no. and this no is, a, is that. No? <laughs> that is our hope because we, we cannot do it artificially no? but when she sees that oh look my darcy is trying she tries so hard now i will and then sometimes in this consciousness, I become also very thankful for what is right now. No? And I think this thankfulness is important, but also some kind of lamentation, sometimes tears and regret. Why not is my mind, why is my mind still, you know, not so pure that Swami need not come? And then sometimes also when she comes in kind of like, you know, memories and some inspiration, then also, wow, this is her grace, mercy now. She is touching me at this moment with her grace. Mercy of Gurdi, mercy of Swam. And then as a result of such deep contemplation and concentration of the mind, a very astonishing metamorphosis can take place. Now Baba is speaking about uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. There is one uh, example, but we have also different other examples. Yeah. There is, there's this example with the iron rod that we have to hold in the fire. Yeah. No? That is very common, this metamorphosis, no? this, this transformation, how it happens that we have to put our mind, our heart in the fire of Swamini's love, of the Rasika Bhaktas, of their association, so that the transformation can be happening, can be maybe speeded up also. And here in Bhagatam, there's one 
verse about one uh, uh, worm. It is uh, a grass worm who gets trapped in a hole by a cockroach. You know, cockroaches like this. <laughs> These animals we don't want to see here. Ah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's like a story, but it's that by the fear and by always being absorbed of this uh, a cockroach, the grass worm turns into a cockroach. Wow. That is the power of the mind. Wow. And then they take this example, Shuman Bhagavatam takes this example to show that the meditator or the body, the body of the meditator becomes like the one he meditates on. Wow. Hmm? That is the... Okay. the underline. Yes, good. Continue underline. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have stopped it. The body of the meditator, also not not only the, the subtle body, the mind or the heart, but our whole material body also becomes spiritualized by the inconceivable power of meditation. Wow. Subtle body, gross body. And now Baba continues and he puts another highlight and he says if the gross body can change like that as a result of meditation wow. then there can be no doubt that the practitioner receives a transcendental body by meditating on Sri Radha Mohan's transcendental body Underline. yes <laughs> So, there is this example of these two animals. One is afraid of the bigger one who wants to eat him. And because of this fear, this intensity becomes so strong that they transform into, like, look like this. And so Baba says, we should know this to be the inconceivable power of meditation. Wow. And then when we know about the power of this meditation, we should know, have no doubt that the practitioner, the Saka, receives a transcendental body by meditating on Sri Krishna's, on Sri Radha Mohan's transcendental body. Wow. That is uh, a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah. And also nowadays in the modern, uh, let's say, world, many people, they meditate about the power of positive thinking oh, yes. eh? and positive affirmations. Yes. And we know it has effect. Yes. Nowadays, they use it good if, as a therapy wow. for like make the body again become healed when there is something wrong because the power of meditation and concentration is very, very strong. So much so that we can receive a transcendental body if the power and concentration and the faith, of course, is in this focus. And we know this. We have some example in this material world which is not so nice, but I would like to concentrate on the good examples. That when people love each other, they become to look alike. No? They look alike because we, we have this tendency to take on each other quality when we laugh. <laughs> like, for example, I always feel when I am back in Germany or so, and then I see the pictures of all the devotees who are here in Vrindavan Dam, 
then I feel, oh my God, they look all so beautiful and so young. No, because all uh, meditating on the spiritual transcendental goal on the lotus feet of Shimadi Radhika and Radha Mohan, and they all become transformed into dasis, into little manjaris, and this is also seen externally. Because yeah. the whole body transforms, and good if I know that your god brother. Um, Mohan Baba, yeah. Yeah? he was well known. Maybe you have some uh, Lila. <laughs> he he was also very much transformed in his ways of Manjari bath practice, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I have been here for two years. Yeah. <laughs> this is the power of education. And being in Vrindavan, and as we know, this uh, land is full of the dust of Srimati Radhika. And uh, so we are in touch, very close to her. And she is helping us so much in this effort. She is so merciful. She is Karuna Mai. So when she is doing this to us, that she is watching and she is reciprocating, it will be more easy to realize our Swarup here. Wow. That's why we come. Yes. Because we are eager to realize our our real self, our spiritual identity, and then live it in this world now and here, and bless ourselves and the whole world with it. Because everyone who comes in touch also with someone who has realized their spiritual self will also be inspired and become younger and younger. <laughs> Wow. And then the mir miracles happen. And yeah, this is the power of the mind. We know also, I have one book at home. It's about the power of mental healing. And they have found out that people who have, you know, gotten some information about whatever they take as a medicine, even if it's not true, they will heal. And what to speak about uh, coming in contact with the Supreme Goddess Mahabharata Swarupini, coming in contact with personified love, the thing that makes the whole world spin around. <laughs> Not the thing, I mean the person. <laughs> yeah. And therefore, I like this uh, in this uh, airport what Baba says. If the gross body can change as a result of meditation, then there can be no doubt that the practitioner receives a transcendental body by meditating on Sri Radha Krishna's transcendental body. Can you expand on this? Okay. Would you like to? Mm -hmm. So, so Sri Didi saying, if we see each other, then the the our face and quality become similar. Like if we see the latter every day and meditate then sometimes you know like a guru dev is always meditating sometimes guru dev's face become mohan <laughs> you know or sometimes someone who meditate to you know swamini radharani like uh, nititi sometimes become face of radharani or sometimes in japan everybody you no know, many people have a uh, cats and dogs they are like walking with dogs 
then sometimes we see the face, you know, and look like the same face with the dog. So this is because of meditation. And the Vishwana Chakrabati Thakur said, actually, to, to, to do our sadhana, to, to, to meditate Supreme Lord, then our, our subtle body become like, uh, like ash. Externally, there is subtle body. But so if you see, uh, if we see like a, on, like a paper, some, some magazine, on the fire and then looks like the shape is there but once touching a little bit then all become ash so similarly if we meditate properly then our subtle body is broken and then our spiritual body will manifest so in spiritual uh, it's a spiritual practice is to to broken our our ego our subtle body and also to 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 to, to revive said our spiritual body because if we want to associate with uh, Radha Mohan, who has spiritual body, then we must have spiritual body like them. In this material body, we cannot serve them. So therefore, uh, Buddha should be, we have to purify ourselves, our ego, our desire. We have to change it into material into spiritual mm -hmm. so and then this this different kind of dhyana mm -hmm. meditation will uh, explain in takura mahasaya and also Siddhi <laughs> just repeating like a parrot thank you so nice so i repeat for the devotees who have just come now in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is one example how meditation is so powerful that even we can change our body. In Srimad Bhagavatam, 11 Kanto, is a story that the grass worm, one animal who got trapped in a hole by a cockroach, becomes a cockroach also by always being absorbed in thoughts of it without changing his previous body the body of the meditator becomes like the one he meditates on we should know this to be the inconceivable power of meditation. And if the gross body can change like that as a result of meditation, then there can be any doubt that the practitioner receives a transcendental body by meditating on Sri Radha Mohan's transcendental body. Yeah. So if the animals, they meditate on fear or us as humans, and then our consciousness and bodies change. Like Jainanda Maharaj was nicely explaining, when we meditate on the transcendental beings of Radha Rani, and her beloved Mohan, then also we will develop transcendental bodies. There's no doubt about it. This is what Chilanara Thomas Thaku says. <laughs> and in Srimad Bhagavat, it is described that Srila Dhruva Mahashai practitioner's body turned transcendental on the strength 
of his constant meditation on the Supreme Lord. Nicely meditating on Sri Radha Mohan's forms, their attributes, their pastimes and service is called Chan. Thus, there are four kinds of meditations. We can meditate on a form, on attributes, qualities, on pastimes, and on service. And this is now further explained, the different kinds of meditation. The first one is Rupa Dhyan, meditation on the form. This is the meditation on the beauty and the sweetness of each of Sri Sri Radha Krishna's sweet limbs from tip to toe. For instance, at the end of Sri Krishna Sandava, Sri Majiva Goswami Pad has described the sweet forms of Sri Sri Radha Mohan as follows. May the sweetness of Sri Sri Radha and Mohan who are shining with a golden and bluish splendor and whose eyes are dancing in a spotless festival of play and who are anointed with endless cleverness and erotic artistry and who are greatly delighted by the nectarian fragrance of their mutual love. May this sweetness of Shishi Radha Mohan attack my mind in all respects. It's an interesting prayer also, no? that, yeah, my mind is maybe not so much able to constantly absorb. But here Jiva Goswami is saying that their sweetness and their all good qualities, they can attack me also. When somebody is in attack, then they are helpless, right? So I can pray, please attack me, take me over, take me, make me yours, and let me feel that you are mine. The purport is that she, Radha Mohan's sweet forms are resplendent with bright golden and blue effulgence. Which means that she, Radha's effulgence that resembles molten gold and Sri Krishna's blue effulgence that resembles sapphires illuminate the horizon. Their sweet forms are so shiny and so great that the horizon of my heart can be illuminated if I can if I can let them enter, if I pray that they may enter and take a seat. 
Shri Radha's right eye and Shri Krishna's left eye are gladdened by wonderful movements due to meeting the beloved. As and it is as is as if their indescribably bodily sweetness is dancing. So their eyes are meeting, and while they are meeting, their sweetness is increased. Each other, Radharani's sweetness is is increasing. Krishna's sweetness, and Krishna's sweetness is increased by Shrimati Radhika's sweetness. And this sweetness is dancing. Their wonderful bodies are both surrounded by the endless expertise of pastimes of Madanakya Mahabhav, which means that their two bodies are entwined, entwined. Mm -hmm. Entwined, they are like they are together, like it. Yes, <laughs> like two creepers, they are around each other, Gurudev, and they are becoming one in this regard. Mm -hmm. And they are not only because of their bodies entwined, but they are entwined by the symptoms of Madana. Their love and their affection from, of each other is expressed. They are embracing each other in a very nice way. And they are kissing each other. And that activities, these expressions are of endless, wonderful sweetness. That is not so difficult to understand because even in this world, we like to be embraced. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. like to kiss each other. When I love somebody, I want to give them a kiss on the cheek. It happens naturally. <laughs> but then here, Baba is explaining this endless expertise of Madan Nakya Mahabal. <laughs> That is the expertise of Srimati Radhika's endless deep love for Moha. And that pure, selfless, transcendental emotion is so strong that it creates waves, never ending more waves of deep, deep, deep sweetness to all of those who are wanting to serve them. That's amazing that before Krishna is like the ocean, there is only silent. But by the touch of Swamini, this ocean starts to move. <laughs> Only by her touch, this ocean starts to move like this. He may touch many others, but this movement, what after all becomes tsunami, is only start by the touch of Swami. Jai Ho! This is the speciality in this. Try not to keep quiet, you know? No. Like, uh, say, Guru Devi say, see without wave is not beautiful. Oh. Yeah, like a phone. Oh, but uh, but uh, once touch Radharani, that's it. Strong wave is coming. That, that, that wave of Rasa is inundated, both of them, and also 
even Manjari or other living entities. So you are right. <laughs> we, we try to take care that they meet. And then we are, also, we are, we are prepared also, we are here. Yeah. See also. Yeah. Yes, and how wonderful it is that we can serve this beautiful, you know, expression of their love that by bringing them together, by dressing and, and making nice flower garlands. This is a chance of a lifetime that Lord Chaitanya is giving us. And this blue sapphire, easy to, to see the ocean, no? in this color. Mm -hmm. See also blue. Yeah. One day somebody asking to Gurudev, why Krishna Kara is practiced <coughs> okay. and Guru is? Then Gurudev's answer was, Krishna has all feeling, all qualities. So if we have many colors, so all colors are mixing. So what's happening? Yeah, then become you know little bluish like a blackish. <coughs> So, and radicals is a little bit different <laughs> because radicals one point. Krishna has Krishna's attention is you know go 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 many. He want to enjoy many persons. He want to enjoy many rasa, many relationships, but radicals feeling, radicals, radicals attention is one point. So, and radicals is always bright. From Radhika's toenail, that Govinada Bhaya is saying. So everything there, even even reflect Mohan. Also create all universe. Ananta Koti, Vishnu Loka. So Radhika's nature and Krishna's nature is is a little bit different. They are one, but the uh, Radhika is serving Moha with Madana Kyama. So, and this beautiful love, which has the golden color. It's so pure that it has the power to make the blackish, bluish Krishna golden. <laughs> that is the power of her love. And he wants to experience that. He is begging for her feelings. For the effulgent of a golden heart. He wants to serve a golden heart, and that's why he came as Lord Chaitanya. And in that Chaitanya, he is also helping us to become servants of Srimati Radhika. <laughs> And I was thinking, how is the beauty that they can express the love of Radha and Mohan? So sweet, like here, no? 
just to read these purports of our the Mahabanis of our great Rasika, Vaishnavas and Acharyas is melting the heart and making us ready to also grow in our meditations into the beautiful eternal servants of Shrimati Radhika that we are. May the indescribable sweetness of Radha and Mohan's combined form awaken in my heart in such a way that there will be not the slightest other perception. That is what Jiva Goswami was praying for. May the sweetness of Sri Sri Radha Mohan, who are shining with a golden and bluish splendor, attack my mind in all regards, in all respects. <laughs> And here Baba again is writing, may the indescribable sweetness, it is not to be expressed in words, it is indescribable because it is divine and it's not only divine it is madanakya mahabha this is the this is this love that even krishna cannot grasp he cannot grasp and he wants to experience that that's why he comes as shri Chika. Or what we listen in the last days, she comes and he is following. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this love is unlimited. It was a beautiful explanation. <laughs> yes. May this combined form awaken in my heart in such a way that there will be not the slightest other perception. <coughs> and this word akranta in this verse means <laughs> may the sweet dual form not leave my heart even slightly. <coughs> oh, no. <This> is, <coughs> it could be a, uh, also an enjoying mood to see this, right? Sure. But in the case of the Manjaris, <coughs> they're watching the scene to think about what is her service, what to do and to get it in the right moment. Yeah. It's not to enjoy this scene. When these wines, they are Entwining. <laughs> the hairs are together. They, who can who can help? <coughs> this is the manjari. They are watching. <coughs> they are taking part, and they are serving. This is the main thing. With these eyes to see the scriptures, this is the beauty. In our case. Yeah, this is a training that we are getting here in Vrindavan. Sure. We have to come out of this consciousness of enjoying. No, we want to serve Radha Mohan in their service, in their meeting, in their, and especially of, in Manjari Bath practitioner, Swaminis, Dasis. Mm. and become purified and become, you know, make, uh, you know, ready for this. 
We can only see this scene as manjari. Otherwise, <coughs> we are in enjoyer. And you know, with the bodily consciousness. But when we sit here in the association of Gurudev, we have to be in, uh, in our form as a manjari. Meditate on this and to listen this verse and this picture. Yeah. And then to see this from, from the spiritual side, and how to serve them. So then we are entered. We are entered the, the pastime and we take part with the spiritual body. Yes, without spiritual body, there's no entrance. Not to speak from few. <coughs> but we have the great chance that this is possible by mercy. And in the next sentence here, first there's the prayer and the prayer for intensity the prayer for may my heart and my mind be attacked by them they are coming also it's not only me i am going i am begging i am crying that i try but also they they come and they help us and from this it is to be understood that the self manifest Sweet forms of Sri Radha Mohan will automatically become revealed by to the pure hearted meditator out of sheer grace. <coughs> and there's the grace. There's Sri Radha Rani, there's Sri Mohan, and there's the grace. That we call Guru Kripa. Because this grace is manifesting through those who already have realized their spiritual existence and bodies. And by their mercy, and by our service, desire, and greed, Shishirada Mohan will become revealed when the heart is purified and when the meditation is strong. So, and then there are these different factors, and they come together, and then grace can take place. You like this, Gurdi? Yeah. And I think this morning you explained, Gurudev, that when does this grace come? It is like a matter of Sukriti from past life and from this life and mercy. And what does Gurudev do? He is helping us to revive and to remember our eternal constitutional position and helping us to create the samskaras in the heart that will help us to come closer to our real eternal self. Participate. I would like to participate with my friend. 
When we are talking about the um, uh, from beginnings, say ah, okay, okay. The, then uh, there is something that I want to say. I want to participate. So, uh, according to this lecture, uh, there is something that is say about the waves uh, of the sea. Cuando están junto Radha Mohan. When Radha Mohan are together. En, en ese abrazo amoroso de enredadera. In that embrace or loving embrace of the latica. Y aunque yo no he recibido mi swarup. And even if I don't have my swarupa. Puedo decirles. I can tell. Que estos oleajes. Lo he sentido aquí en Brindaba. That these ways I have been feeling this since I'm in Brindavan. Cuando me acerco al altar. When I come to the altar. Y siento deseos de llorar. And I feel this incredible feeling for crying. Lágrimas derrama por mm. mis mejillas. And when my tears go down for my cheeks. Cuando escucho el canto de los mantas. De las madres que están en el micrófono. And when I hear how the beautiful mothers that are in the microphone are chanting these mantras, se me derrite el corazón. My heart starts to melt. Y siento que el amor. When I saw these kids that comes to the altar for playing, veo sus ojos, and I see their eyes, tan limpios, tan brillantes, so clear, so brilliant, y como desde pequeños se inclinan ante la deidad, and how from the beginning, in the childhood, they just pay obeisance to the deity, mi corazón se derrite, my heart gets melt. Y me salen lágrimas, and my tears goes out from happiness and joy. Gracias. Thanks. Somebody else would like to express? <clears throat> so I think this is a good example for the quality we need to experience this. This is the soft heart. So this uh, beautiful picture of the the transcendental bodies of Radha Mohan in embrace. This is called Rupa Dhyan. And then there's another kind of meditation. It's called Guna Dhyan. That's the meditation about their qualities. Although Shri Shri Radha Mohan have innumerable attributes, the devotees who have taken shelter of Madhurya Ras meditate on 25 of them that are suitable to the Madhurya Ras. Shri Krishna's attributes are he is lovely, sweet, endowed with all good qualities or characteristics, powerful, endowed with fresh youthfulness. Eloquent. Speaking sweet words, learned, effulgent, calm, 
clever, dexterous, happy, grateful, submissive, subdued by love, brave, great, famous, captivating to women, ever fresh, peerless in his playfulness, beautiful, and the greatest flute player. Shirada Rani's attributes are she is sweet, a fresh youthfulness. She has restless eyes. She is decorated with a sweet smile. <laughs> Endowed with beautiful and auspicious lines. Her bodily fragrance maddens Moha. She is expert in singing and speaks charmingly. She is expert in joking. She is humble, filled with compassion, clever, dexterous, bashful. You can see it filled with compassion. This is. My body fast. Speak the mic or not. This point compassion is important for the manjaris or those who like to get the manjari. So because of this quality we can be sure that she will uh, accept us. So there is no doubt. She is respectful, brave, patient, very playful. <laughs> Filled with Mahabhav. And she is loved by everyone in Braja. Her fame pervades the whole universe. She is dedicated to her superiors. She is subdued by her girlfriend's love for her. She is the best of Krishna's sweethearts. And Keshava is always subdued by her. Examples of these attributes of Sri Sri Radha Krishna can be found in scriptures like Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Ujjwala And then comes <coughs> This next, or no, first Baba says, meditation on all these attributes is called Guna Dhyan. Guna 
Now is the explanation of Lila Dhyan. In the Gaudiya, Vaishnava Sampradaya, there are methods and manuals on how to meditate on Shishi Radha Mohan's eightfold daily pastimes. And this is called Lila Dhyan. Yeah. I have a question, Guruji. Is there is it okay for us that we try to meditate according to my level? Or should we is there like a difference between Gunadyan, Rupadyan, or Lila Dhyan? Start with some There is no problem. From where you But meditation is Read will grow one day. We can start anywhere. As long as we meditate, it will grow. And the desire will grow. Yeah. Yeah. On the basis of Srimad Rupa Goswami parts, a bright description of these pastimes, and after seeing Kavi Karnapurna's book, Krishna Nika Kaumudi, Srila yes, Krishna Das Kavriyats Goswami has composed a scripture named Govinda Lilamrita. After, in which he elaborately describes the eightfold daily pastimes of Sri Radha. After this, Gaudiya Vaishnava Chaya Shila Vishwana Chakravati Path has elaborated on some brief parts of Govinda Lilamrita. In his scripture, Krishna Bhavanamrita. <laughs> After that, Srila Krishna Das Siddha Baba, resident of Govardhan, <laughs> received the merciful order of Sri Radharani herself. <laughs> This is of to compose the Gora Govinda Ashtakalya Bhutika, in which he promulgated the meditation on Gora Lila along with the meditation of Sri Radha Mohan's pastimes. <coughs> Yes, it is. Uh, now I just want to say that all the books are mentioned where our great Acharyas have mentioned the activities and daily pastimes of Sri Radha Mohan, where one can meditate or read them. Okay, okay, can you see and Baba says Lila Dhyan automatically includes meditation on form, attributes and services. Yeah. 
Therefore, this is especially to be done by practitioners of Raga Nuga Bhakti. So, in other words, if we enter into the life of Radha Mohan, then automatically in these pastimes, in these activities, it is the attributes that are becoming present to us and uh, the forms we are when we hear the leelas it is making the heart the open heart ready to to feel them to see them to perceive the service but i want to add that for myself the association with the Rasika Vaishnavas who are mature in their meditation has given me the most uh, help in my desire to grow into my spiritual identity, my Svaru. Myself, when I hear others who are already developed their spiritual identity, in their spiritual identity, in their service, then some particles of their frame seva and their love can touch my heart and I feel a chance that there will be also some taste to go deeper in my meditation. I feel personally feel this more powerful, the hearing from the Rasika Vaishnava saints, the sadhus, and le reading myself alone a book. Because like you said, if I read something and I have uh, uh, my consciousness is not ready, has no platform to receive that, there's a high likeliness that it will be mixed. But like now, we have the chance with our beautiful classes, we are and together and we are growing together and we are flowing together this has a great great value i feel this is more powerful than myself reading alone a book because i cannot ask a question and maybe i put my own imaginations inside so i feel very thankful that we have the chance under the guidance of our Rasika Vaishnavas to speak about it, to listen and to absorb the feelings that are necessary to come to the purified platform that I can feel myself a mantra. Can you share on this So there's a fourth uh, kind of meditation, it's called Devadhyaya. Mm -hmm. This is also called Manasa Seva or mental service. That is the service done inside. And in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, it is the rule to render mental service to Sri Radha Mohan and their girlfriends within the Yoga Pit. There are two kinds of leelas. Swarasiki and Mantramai. 
ये मान करना दस बारासी की वर्जन इस लाइक स्ट्रीम And the month of May version is resembling a lake. The lake is situated within the stream. And has no independence. Still it is recognized and named as separate. The Astakalya Lila is Swarasiki. And the Yoga Peet Meditation Lila is Mantra Mai. This Yoga Peet Mantra Mai Milan Lila means that Shri Yugala is served. With mentally conceived paraphernalia in full identification with one Siddhasvaru. So he has also explained that to enter into our service, it is important to have the full identification. With one Sita Swaru, Govardhan, yes, Govardhan. We often hear this beautiful explanation that meaning, Rasika meaning of the word Govardhan is to grow in our spiritual senses. Go. Is the senses and Vardhan means to increase. And Gurudev always uh, is sharing this beautiful moment when he was sitting with the great Rasika Vaishnavas together. And I don't, who was it, Gurudev? Was it uh, Bhakti by Bhakti? Much? Yeah? Bhakti by Puri Maharaj, he was sitting on the chair and they were somehow discussing these deep subjects and he jumped from his seat and he said, Go Vardhan! So the meaning is that without increasing our spiritual identity and the spiritual senses it's not it's not possible to go into the yoga peat meditation <laughs> we may hear about it and it sounds a little bit uh, technical but we have to grow into this and that is all about the manasa seva and gurudev will instruct us and guide us also in this manasa seva you want to add on this gurudev I mean, In his commentary of Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Sri Majiva Goswami Pat has revealed the glories of Manasa Seva by quoting a story from the Brahma Vaivata Puran. In Pratishta, no, Pratishtana Pura. There was a poor Brahman who has a strong desire to render devotional service, but was not able to do because he was too poor to afford buying the required paraphernalia. One day he sat in an assembly of Vaishnavas where he heard during a lecture about Bhagavad Dharma. <laughs> that even if one serves Shri Hari only mentally, 
was mentally conceived conceived paraphernalia he will be pleased okay so now sorry we have to stop our manager is uh, saying that we have to we have another zoom coming up Gordon. it's two o'clock now uh, i mean it's the second zoom <laughs> Yes. Okay, I roll up, I wind up by, by this Leela. <coughs> so when he heard this, he became determined to render mental devotional service. One day he went to bathe in the Godavari River and completed his daily rituals when he sat down in a lonely place. He established in his mind a deity of Shihari and began to serve him with mentally conceived ingredients. Thus he attained paramount bliss in this way he would always serve new mentally conceived things every day and attain great bliss in his meditative service in this way some time passed one day he cooked excellent sweet rice within his mind and placed it on a golden tray to cool off, fanning the preparation with a palm leaf. <laughs> After a while, the Brahmana stuck his mental finger in the preparation. <laughs> to see whether it had cooled off or not. <coughs> and his physical finger got burned <laughs> by the heat of that mental sweet rice. <laughs> when he felt that his finger was burned, he thus realized that the sweet rice was not fit to be offered to Shihari. <laughs> he became very unhappy. And this feeling broke his samadhi. <laughs> then he saw that his physical finger was also burned and was giving him pain. But that didn't make him unhappy at all. Rather, he began to lament that the Lord's offering was spoiled. And he had been unable to complete his devotional service. Seeing the Brahmanas dispersed, Shihari sent an airplane <laughs> and had him brought to a special boat. <laughs> <laughs> immediate, <laughs> immediate liberation. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Amen. 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 Am